Well, good evening and welcome to another service, a Wednesday night service, a prayer meeting service at Community Baptist Church. I don't know exactly where you might be right now, but in your home or in your automobile or wherever you might be, it's our prayer that as we open the Bible and study the scriptures together, that it will be a great blessing to you. On these Wednesday nights, we've been looking at the subject, Lord, what will you have me to do? Obviously, that's the question that the Apostle Paul asked the Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus, hunting down Christians, hauling them back to Jerusalem, subjecting them to great punishment and imprisonment and some even put to death. But that question, that penetrating question that he asked the Lord, Lord, what is it that you would have me to do, is a question that we have been considering and looking at on these Wednesday nights, and this will be my final message on this particular subject. When we ask that question, the Lord does not leave us in the dark as to what He wants us to do. The Bible is filled with assignments, with commands that God gives to us that He means for you and He means for me to implement in our individual life and bring honor and glory to His name. So what is it, Lord, that you would have me to do? We've seen in our study that God wants us to glorify Him. God wants us to worship Him. God wants us to obey Him. He wants us to serve Him. We ask the question, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? The Lord tells us that He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to thank Him, and He wants us to abide in Him. This evening, I, I want to look at another responsibility that we have as a Christian, and I, I want to share with you the fact that we have the responsibility to walk in the fear of God. I'm going to look at that after we pray. I trust it will be a help and a blessing to you. Our loving Father, we do thank you for the privilege that we have to gather together and open up the Bible and study the Word of God. I'm thankful, Lord, for each one that has joined with us and it's my prayer that as we look to the perfect law of liberty, the Holy Spirit will lead us and direct us and guide us into all truth. I'm thankful for the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and I pray that He would help us this evening to honor You, to glorify You, and, and to be a blessing to Your people. I ask, Lord, that Your name would be honored, and we'll thank You for what You do, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God reminds us in His Word that we have the responsibility to walk before Him in the fear of the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to take them and turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. I want to call your attention to verse number 28. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and in verse number 28, where the Bible says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. To walk in fear before the Lord means that we walk very cautiously, that we walk very carefully, that our, our, our life is, is lived in such a way that we're being discreet and want to do nothing that would be opposing to Him, that would not delight him and be a blessing to him. To fear God means that you and I have a reverence for him that impacts our lives to the point that we walk before him in fear with a desire to please him and honor him in obeying his precious word. When we fear the Lord, it impacts the way that we're going to respect him. When we fear the Lord, it's going to impact us in how we obey him. When we fear the Lord, it's going to impact our life as to how we submit to Him. And it certainly impacts our lives as to how we are going to worship Him. There's great benefits in fearing the Lord. I'd like to give you a few of those this evening. The first thing that I would say to you, when we fear God, when we walk before Him in fear and have reverence and respect and we're submitted to Him, and we want to exalt Him, I, I believe it enables us to turn from evil. If you look in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, and in verse number 6, the writer of Proverbs brings that out very clearly for us. 
the book, book of Proverbs, chapter 16, and in verse number 6, the Bible says, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When I look at that passage of Scripture, when I ponder that proverb, I come to the conclusion that if I have a proper respect and a proper fear of God, and I walk cautiously and carefully before Him with a desire to obey Him and to be pleasing in His sight, there is nothing that deters evil more in my life and in your life as does the fear of the Lord. The Bible says that we're going to walk in such a way that we want to avoid evil. We're not, we're not wanting have, to have sin, unconfessed sin, in our life. That's what it means to fear the Lord. It means that it enables us to turn from evil. We stop and think before we act. We stop and think before we speak. We stop and think before we go to a certain place or do a certain thing. We think about it. We carefully meditate upon that. And ask ourselves the question, will this please the Lord? Will it honor the Lord? Or what I'm about to do and what I'm about to participate, will it grieve the Lord and disappoint the Lord and mar my testimony for Him? So when we fear the Lord, there's a great benefit. It enables us to depart from evil. It enables us to say no to sin. And we walk the straight and narrow way. Now, obviously, there's a lot of Christians that don't want to do that today. They, they don't really want to be on the side of the Lord, so to speak, and live in such a way that it's narrow, it's straight, it's in conformity to the Word of God. They want to dabble a little bit in the world and dabble a little bit with Christianity. People that live like that lack fear. They lack the fear of God. They lack that reverence and respect for the Lord. When, when you and I, there's another benefit. When you and I fear God, I, I believe it prolongs our life. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs chapter 10 and in verse number 27. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. You know what that says to me? Righteous behavior brings blessing. Wicked behavior brings nothing but trouble and remorse and difficulty into a person's life. So we need to ask ourselves the question, how do I want to live my life? How long do I want to live my life? If living in righteous ways, godly ways, Bible ways is going to prolong my days, upon the face of the earth, and if wicked ways are going to shorten my life, it's obvious to me that if you really want to live and enjoy the blessings of life, then you want to make sure that you're living righteously and godly in this present world in which we live. You have to hold high esteem for the Lord in order to walk in the fear of the Lord. You have to have a deep concern and desire to please Him if you're going to live righteously and godly in this present world. Not, not only do I have the responsibility of living for the Lord and honoring the Lord and allowing His Word to impact my life and allowing that fear to be present in my life because there's great benefits, it also brings me to the place that I can have a contented life as I walk in the ways of the Lord. In the book of Proverbs chapter 15, and in verse number 16, the Bible says this, Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. In other words, what the Lord is saying to us, it's better to have a little bit of the things of this world. When I talk about the things of this world, I'm not talking about the wicked things of this world. I'm talking about the good blessings that God wants to bestow upon us. It's better to have little and have fear of God than it is to have much of this world and what the world has to offer and live life without the fear of the Lord. Contentment can be found in living out the truths of God's Word. The Apostle Paul said that I, I, I've learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. 
when our eyes are focused on Him and fixed upon Him and desiring to live for Him and serve Him, then whatever state that we're in, we can be content. Another benefit of having the fear of God, it leads to a satisfied life. In the book of Proverbs chapter 19, and in verse number 23, the, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Now stop and think about that. A satisfied life. A, a good life. A, a, a life that is godly and pleasing to the Lord. The Bible says that that is a satisfied life. Are you satisfied with the life that you are living? Are you satisfied with the investment that you are making in the work of God? Are you satisfied with the testimony that you have for Jesus Christ? Are you satisfied? The Bible says that the fear of the Lord tendeth to life. In other words, it will lead us into that godly life, that, that good life that pleases the Lord and enables Him to impart rich blessings into our individual life. It tends to life. The fear of the Lord tends to life. But He also tells us in that passage of Scripture that it leads to a satisfied life. There are many people that are dissatisfied today. I've met some that I don't think they could ever be satisfied with anything. Whatever they have, they want more. It never brings satisfaction to their life. They're always trying to get more and do more and have more and tend to the things of this world more than they tend to the spiritual needs of their individual life. But a satisfied life is a life that fears God, that respects God, that has, has a desire to please God. And that kind of life tends to real life, real living, good living, godly living. And it brings great satisfaction into the heart of that one that's living for the Lord. Another benefit that I see from the Bible is that to fear God delivers from a lot of trouble in life. If you turn back in your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 34, and in verse number 7, the book of Psalms, chapter 34, and in verse number 7, the Bible says this, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. There's a lot of trouble in life. And I believe the closer we get to the coming again of Jesus Christ, the more those troubles are going to escalate. I, I really don't know what the outcome is going to be of all of this turmoil and trouble that we are faced with in our nation right now. I, I don't know what tomorrow holds. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful that I can trust the Lord and walk before Him in fear, knowing that He's able to deliver me from a lot of heartache and a lot of trouble in life. I was talking to an individual the other day, and he, he was telling me how messed up his life really was, how, how he strayed from the things of the Lord, how he got into things that he should not have gotten into, and, and, and the consequences that it brought into his life, and how he regretted the very day that he stepped out and started to stray away from the good things of the Lord and all the turmoil and all the trouble that it's brought to him. May I say to you that when we begin to stray and, and we begin to look at things in this world and, and, and they begin to attract us and allure us and draw us away from, from the good things of the Lord, it's going to bring a lot of trouble into our life. If, 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 if we could just heed that warning that God is giving to us in His Word, here's the way to live a satisfied life. Here, here's the way to live a contented life. Here's a way to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord and a life that will spare you a lot of trouble. Just walk in the fear of God. Have respect for God. Have a deep allegiance to the things of the Lord and make your life count for Him. When we fear the Lord, it brings pleasure to the Lord. In the book of Psalms, chapter 147, the Bible tells us in verse number 11, Psalms 147 in verse number 11, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear Him, in those that hope in His mercy. 
What a blessing. The, the Bible is just simply saying the Lord takes pleasure in, in those that have reverence and respect and are deeply committed to do what He wants them to do. He has pleasure in that. It's always a blessing to be with the people of God. My, my life for many, many, many years has been involved with God's people. I was saved at the age of 19, all the way back in 1963. I trusted the Lord as my personal Savior. I've never regretted that decision. It brought a, a, an immediate change in my life, a, a desire to, to be in the Word, a desire to be in prayer, a, a desire to be in church, a desire to be with the people of God. I've been around God's people many, many, many years, and, and I always enjoy that, and I, I trust that you enjoy that as well. It brings pleasure to my heart when we're able to go to church and we're able to gather together, when we open our hymn books and we begin to sing praises to the Lord, when, when the preacher opens the Bible and begins to proclaim the timeless truths of the Word of God. It brings pleasure to my heart. It's the greatest, greatest desire that I have, and that is to serve the Lord. He brings pleasure to me. But the thought of me bringing pleasure to Him is overwhelming to me. The fact that we could even please Him and bring, bring pleasure to Him is, is beyond my comprehension. But I, I, I want to challenge you because God says in His Word that He takes pleasure. He takes great pleasure in them that fear Him. Do you reverence the Lord? Do you respect the Lord? So much so that it's impacted your life that you're careful about the thoughts that you have, that you're very careful about the hidden desires that you have in your heart, that, that, that you're so wanting to please the Lord that you're concerned about every word that flows from your mouth? Are, are, are you respecting God and, and desiring to please Him? Then we must walk in the fear of God. And then I've discovered this from the Bible. To fear God perfects holiness in the life of the believer. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and in verse number 1, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and in verse number 1, the Bible says this, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God of God. If I understand that verse correctly, God's given us great promises, and hallelujah for that. I feel a shout coming on right now when I think about the promises of God. Uh, Peter called them the precious promises of God. Every one of God's promises are precious. And, and the Bible says, having these promises, dear beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. When he talks about the filthiness of the flesh, he's talking about those outward actions that we have. When he talks about cleansing ourselves from the filthiness of the Spirit, I believe he's talking about those things that are hidden and within that no one else sees. The flesh, it can go on display and others will see the, the ways of the flesh. The Spirit, the hidden things of life that no one else knows about. The Bible says when we fear God, we not only want to take care of those obvious things that are outward and evident to everyone, but we also want to take care of those hidden and secret things that no one else knows about. Perfecting holiness. How do we do that? In the fear of God. We, we, we become concerned uh, about our outward testimony and action, but we also take careful cautious concern about those hidden things, those secret things that no one else knows about. The, these are a, a few of the rich benefits that we have as a result of fearing the Lord. You'll, you'll have a deep respect for the Word of God. You'll hold Him, our, our God, in high esteem. When you fear Him, you'll have a deep concern and desire 
to please Him. But there's something else I want to share with you tonight, and that is this. Not only am I responsible to walk in the fear of God, I'm responsible to look for Jesus to come again. In the book of Titus, chapter 3, or chapter 2, and verse 13 and 14, the Bible calls attention to the fact that you and I are to be looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the hope of every Christian. Would you say amen to that? The coming again of Jesus Christ to take us home to be with Him is the hope of every Christian. It's not only the hope of every Christian, but it also is the help of every Christian. Because the Bible says, if any man have this hope, he purifieth himself even as he is pure. When we look for Jesus to come again, and that word look means to anticipate and anxiously await for the Lord to come again. Our, 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 our ear is open and listening for the sound of the trumpet. Our, our, our ear is open and, and, and waiting to hear the shout of the archangel. We're anticipating those graves to open. And, and we're looking for that call to come home to be with the Lord. And the Bible says that when we have that hope, it helps us to purify ourselves, even as He is pure. The purity of our life is not measured by each other. The purity of our life is measured by none other than the example of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. He is the very one that we are to measure up to. He's the one that you and I are to seriously contemplate as to how much we're like Him. The Bible says that if we have that hope of that glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we'll purify ourselves even as He is pure. So, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? Well, He says, I want you to glorify me. I want you to worship me. I want you to obey me. I, I, I want you to serve me. I, I want you to trust me and thank me. I, I want you to abide in me. I, I want you to fear me. And I want you to be looking for my son, the Lord Jesus, to come again and take you home to heaven. These are the few of the things that I've seen from Scripture when we ask ourselves, Lord, what do you want me to do? Ask yourself that question. As you search the Scriptures, Ask the Lord, what is it that you want me to do? I know that we could add to that list and spend weeks and months and maybe even years looking at the things that God expects in the life of a believer. It's taken on new meaning to me. That one single question has probed my heart, penetrated my heart, and has put a desire in my heart to please Him. I hope that it will do the same for you. Our loving Father, we thank You for Thy precious Word. What a blessing it is to have it and to share it, to preach it, proclaim it. But more importantly, Lord, what a blessing it is to live it. And I pray this evening that You would take these simple words, drive home the message to our hearts, and help us to press on to be more like Jesus every day. And we'll thank You for that because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being with us tonight. I trust the message has been an encouragement and help to you. And until our next time together, may God keep you in His everlasting love.